Welcome to the President's Diary, where we take a look at His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali's week of activities. His Excellency started his week by accepting the letters of credence from the non-resident ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany to Guyana, His Excellency Christoph Nicholas Eich. The President spoke about Guyana's Low Carbon Development Strategy, LCDS, the country's leadership on forestry and carbon market, and the robust development of its health sector. He also said that Guyana is working to become a global leader in food, energy, and climate security. President Ali led Guyana's delegation at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference of Parties, COP28, in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. On Wednesday, President Ali held bilateral discussions with the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan. The two leaders reviewed opportunities to develop existing cooperation, especially in the economic and development fields, and agreed to build on these relations in a way that serves their country's vision for a sustainable society and a prosperous future. The meeting discussed the importance of COP28 in finding solutions to achieve sustainability and advance global climate action. On Thursday, the President met with His Majesty King Charles III and former UK Prime Minister and current Foreign Secretary David Cameron. During the meeting with the Foreign Secretary, issues related to the Ghana-Venezuela controversy were raised. On Friday, President Irfan Ali delivered his national statement at the COP28 World Climate Action Summit. President Ali believes leaders must reset and reflect on how these challenges can be addressed inclusively and without a detriment of the world's developing countries and the poorest people. If the debate of COP28 is framed by two camps, one calling for no cuts in fossil fuel production, including the most polluting form such as coal, and the other saying that the only solution to net zero is an end to fossil fuel production, then we will fail once again to achieve a viable outcome and not to give our world the energy it needs to grow and prosper. President Ali re-emphasized that Ghana stands in solidarity with every country that is working to create a better future for all, especially in developing nations. We are a carbon net positive country and aim to stay there. We accept the responsibilities that come with being a new oil producer. Our economy will grow more than threefold while keeping energy related emissions flat. Upon receiving the ruling of the ICJ granting of provisional measures against Venezuela, President Ali reaffirmed Guyana's dedication to pursuing a peaceful legal resolution to the controversy. Fellow Guyanese, today the International Court of Justice issued an important order granting the provisional measures against Venezuela that Guyana requested in response to Venezuela's announcement that it would be holding a referendum that would endorse, among other illegal measures, Venezuela's annexation of Guyana's executable region. The order of the court was unanimous, with all of the sitting judges voting in favor of it. The order states, and I quote, Pending a final decision in the case, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela shall refrain from taking any action which would modify the situation that currently prevails in a territory in dispute, whereby the Cooperative Republic of Guyana administers and exercises control over the area, end of quote. We welcome this unanimous ruling by the ICJ. As the court has made clear, Venezuela is prohibited from annexing or trespassing upon Guyanese territory or taking any other actions, regardless of the outcome of its referendum on December 3rd, that would alter the status quo in which Guyana administers and controls the executable region as an integral part of a sovereign territory under the arbitral award of the 3rd of October, 1899. Today's ruling is legally binding on Venezuela, both the UN Charter and the Statute of the Court, to which Venezuela is a party, require its strict compliance. This is an opportunity for Venezuela to join Guyana in demonstrating respect for international law and the principles that govern peaceful coexistence. Guyana remains steadfast 
in its commitment to the international judicial process and the rule of law. It is fully confident that when the ICJ issues its final judgment on the merits of the case, it will conclude that the Essequibo is legally and rightfully Guyanese territory. We believe that justice, not force, should be the arbiter of international disputes. To this end, reaffirm our dedication to pursuing a peaceful, legal resolution to this dispute in the right and proper place, the ICJ, as authorized by the UN Secretary General in the exercise of his powers under the Geneva Agreement of 1966. The solidarity of the international community with Guyana has been invaluable. We appeal to our sister countries of CARICOM and broader international community to continue supporting the principles of justice and international law in relation to the controversy over Guyana's border with Venezuela. Our collective voice can serve as a beacon for the respect of the United Nations Charter, the rule of law, and the peaceful settlement of disputes. As Guyana prepares to join the UN Security Council, we are conscious of the responsibility that comes with this role to encourage and support international peace and stability and the rule of law. And we encourage all peace-loving nations to insist on Venezuelan, on Venezuelan and Venezuela respect for the Charter of the United Nations and the UN's highest court. We are resolved to maintain our region as a zone of peace, and we invite all nations to join us in this noble pursuit. I thank every Guyanese, our lawyers, our technicians, our diplomats, every member of government, the parliament, for the consistent voice in ensuring that the national community, our regional partners are all aware Today, Guyana's case, what we sought from the court, the provisional measures, was granted. We invite Venezuela to be a good international citizen and to adhere to the orders of the court as we shall. May God bless us as a country and as a people. Thank you. This was the President's Diary, where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thank you for watching. We join us again next time.